<laughs> this is it. This is everything. That, this, that, this. Let's check it out. So doing the YouTube travel thing can sometimes be a pain in the butt with the equipment you have to carry. Let's start off with just the basics, like your camera. So here we have the camera. Usually weighs about a eh, pound to two pounds, maybe about two pounds, depending on what kind of lens you're using. This one is a little bit heavier, so it's about two pounds. And then I usually like to have a shotgun mic. This one has the little dead cat on it, but that's fairly lightweight, not too bad. Got to carry the charger for the camera battery. And then I usually carry my wireless lavalier mic so that way I can hook up and talk without having to use the shotgun mic whenever I want to be a little bit more stealthy. And then of course, let's not forget <sighs> tripod because you're going to need some place to mount all the camera crap. Let's skip forward to what I have now. What I have now is this. This is what I've been using, or this is what I'm actually going to be using a lot more. This is the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. And I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a review of this. This thing is freaking awesome. Makes things a lot simpler when it comes to traveling. And then of course, you got a wireless mic there if you wanna use it. And then we can even go as far as adding the little tripod thing. But basically, this is it. This is everything. That, this, that, this. Let's check it out. The DJI Osmo Pocket 3 Creator Combo. I'm gonna put a link down below here in the description so that way you guys can get yourself one from Amazon. It comes with a cool little case here to store everything in. It's got pockets inside of here. Everything fits in there nice and easily and it makes it very packable so you can travel with it. And that's the main reason I got this thing was to travel with it. This storage case right here is great for mounting the camera and it stores it there so that way you don't have to worry about scratching up the lens or the gimbal getting moved around a lot. So this is perfect for it. Take the camera out, to turn it on, super simple. Flip that sideways and you now have your camera. As you can see, when I move it, the little gimbal articulates itself. And of course you can control it yourself here and to shut it off is just as simple. Just turn it like that. Give it a couple of seconds, it'll shut off and the camera will turn itself in lock mode again. Comes with a couple of things. Number one, you're gonna get the lavalier mic by DJI. You get an extra battery pack right here. So, you got extra juice going to your camera. You don't have to have it because the camera has a battery pack built in, but if you wanna have a little bit of extra juice in there and a longer handle to hold, the camera, then there you go. This is the tripod that will screw on to that battery pack. So now when you open it up here, you have yourself this little studio thing. Switch the little lens there. And now we have ourselves a little studio. We're gonna just go ahead and turn this camera around. And there you are. Hey everybody, this is really weird. I'm looking at myself, looking at you guys, looking at me, looking at myself, looking at you guys, looking at me. <laughs> All right, enough of that crap. Turn it off. All right. You also get this little thing. This is just an extension handle. So let's say, for instance, you don't want the tripod. We take that off, throw that aside, take off the battery pack, put that aside. You have this extra little, tri uh, little handle here. This does not have a battery in it. This one does, this one does not. So once you hook this up, it just gives you extra space to hold the camera. So you really want to go stealth mold mode, but yet you still need space to hold everything. You can hold it right here. Or if you are really daring and you want to just hold it right there by the little nubby nub, you can do that too. Overall, the thing is super easy to use. I'm gonna do a recording here in a second and show you guys how easy it is to use. I love the tracking mode. You can go into face detection mode. You can go into dynamic framing mode. It'll track whatever you wanna track. So let's say I want to track something like, let's say, I don't know, we wanna track this box and we're gonna focus on the DJI box. And now it's going to track, hopefully, the box. Let's see here, oops, I probably gotta turn it on helps if I do that. All right, now it should track the box. So wherever I move my camera, it'll continue to track the box. I don't know if you guys can see this in the screen here, but I'm moving it way over here and that camera lens 
is still turning to track the box. That is cool. Even up here, I'm gonna go up here, see how it's still tracking. Down here, it's still tracking. Lay the camera flat on the ground. It is still tracking the box. How sick is that? I love that feature. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off by exiting that. And we're just gonna shut the camera down, boom. And it shuts down, camera goes back to lock mode. I'm gonna put it in its little case here. Oops, let's put it the right way, huh? Put it in its little case here, and then show you how everything gets nice and stowed away inside of the little carry bag. You got that? Then you drop the battery pack, you drop the little tripod dealy bobber, then you drop the microphone, and then you drop the extra little extension handle. Close it up. And if you want to throw a USB wire, you can throw a USB wire in there also. So that way you can charge everything. And there you have it. This is your new studio in a box. Or I'm sorry, in a bag. Studio in a bag. Mm, studio in a bag. I like that. All right. Now I'm going to show you guys what it looks like when I'm recording studio style. All right. Turn this guy on. You're officially recording now. Monitor, gonna take the camera, which is recording forward that other way. We're just gonna flip the camera over to record this way. We got the little DJI Osmo um, lavalier mic going. Everything seems to be working pretty well. Camera is focused on me. What I'm gonna do now is just going to see if I can't position it just a little bit more right there, perfect. And then touch the screen where I wanted to focus and then lock in on that focus. So it's locked in on my face, so that way the camera's not gonna move, it should be just steady filming right here. So doing a talking head video, like the way a lot of YouTubers do. So if you're a YouTuber that does reviews, then this can be great, because it can do your whole background blurred out thing right here on your face, and then you can do stuff like hold something in front of the camera within three or four inches and it gets actual detail on whatever it is that you're holding in front of the camera and then it goes right back to you. This is really great for YouTube product reviewers because it doesn't require you to carry around a ton of equipment. It's a simple little small camera mounted on a box or a window seal or a chair or a countertop or whatever the heck you wanna put it on, it doesn't matter. And that's it. Monitor in front of me, joystick to control everything, it's so simple. Now, here's the beauty of this. We can set the camera lens to track a face. So I can move the little toggle here on the joystick, which I'm maneuvering, and I can set it to track right on my face. So now it's tracking me. So if I come over here, or I move this way, it starts tracking me. Sometimes it'll lose the track. But for the most part, from what I've seen, it's fairly decent. And this is great for product reviewers on YouTube because you guys can be talking to the camera, explaining your setup, doing whatever you wanna do, reach back and say, I'm gonna grab something here and I'm gonna talk about today's product, which is this. It's a watch, right? And what's great about this is now that we've done that and it's tracked and we've got that little feature, so we've got to move around the room a little bit or move around whatever it is you're doing to do your review and track ourselves. It just adds an extra step of customization to your review. Now we've done that, we can turn that feature off, right? Back to being locked in on the studio and we're talking to the camera. I can show you the watch box and we can get pretty close so that way you can see some of the details without it getting all blurred out and then go right back to the speaker and have you be able to just see the background again and we're doing a regular video again. Another thing that I think is really cool, sometimes it doesn't work great, but go right back to that same tracking feature and we're going to track now this box. So I'm going to position the camera with the joystick just a little bit over here and we're gonna focus in on, let's do the red side. Let me just make sure it really tracks it. Focus on the box. Now this guy is locked on the box now. So when I move this over here a little bit, the camera tracks the box. How sweet is that? Isn't that neat? All right, so let's, that's, that's enough of this. Let's turn that off. But I just think that's a cool feature because now you can track the box. I took it away, so now the camera got all confused. But that is so cool, man. You can track the box. That's just a neat feature. That's awesome. Thank you. 
thank you to the gods above that created this technology because that is, I mean, I'm going to have a ton of fun doing that. So, again, back to the, doing the review stuff. Let's say you want to zoom in on something and get fairly close. Let's shoot this out of the box. And let's see how close it gets. It shouldn't get, it won't get too close, but it'll get close enough. And then again, you can tap the monitor in the center so that way you can focus in on that item and then you can pull it away. The camera goes right back to you. And here is another thing that I like a lot. And I know that you can do a lot of these things with multiple cameras and multiple lenses. You can do interchangeable lenses. You can do uh, lenses that are capable of getting close and yet still kind of doing the view of you talking to the camera. But this requires bulky stuff. There's very few that can do it. My Galaxy S23 is pretty decent, but I still see while I'm recording the video and I'm talking to the Galaxy S23, whenever I want to show something like a watch, the Galaxy switches to a different lens. And when it does, it has a really rough transition where you can tell it looks like somebody just changed out the lens in front of you. It's very wonky and hokey and it's choppy. And now you're looking at the watch close up. And then when you take the watch away, it transitions right back again. It looks like someone swiped the lens off and put a new lens on. It's very clunky. I like the fact that this thing can still kind of get in there and zoom fairly tight on an item. And then when you take it away, it gets right back on the subject. That's great. I also like the fact that it's so tiny and lightweight that I can just grab it and we can move it and we can position it so we can do our review of whatever product it is right here. I'm going to touch the screen just to make sure. Don't want to activate tracking. So we're going to turn that off and we're going to use the joystick. Whoops. Don't want to record my butt down here. So now we can have one of those reviews that you see on YouTube all the time where the person is talking about the item and they're simply showing, showcasing the item right here in their hand. It looks like you're in an overhead camera looking down at it. That is, oh my gosh, I can't express how much I love that feature. It's just, it's, it's awesome. And if you wanted to, you can even click on the little box here, which is on the lens. You can't see what I'm clicking on, but I'm clicking on the monitor and I'm gonna use the joystick to zoom in as much as I can just see how decent it does. So it does a two times zoom, zoom in on the watch. So it's just showing an even closer zoomed in lens of the watch. So that way we can really see just a little bit more detail what we're looking at without having to put a macro lens on the camera. I think that is just so freaking amazing. I just love that. Zoom back out and I'm going to move the camera and put it right back on top of the box. So why is this important? This is important because the last thing that you want to be doing, and it's already difficult enough, if you don't know, editing these videos takes a long time. And it can be very pain in the butt. It can be tedious. It can be time consuming to edit and put these videos together. So when it comes to moving the camera and reposition it and getting a shot of the close up of your watch or whatever it is that you're talking about for your product review and then going right back and moving the camera to a different position with the tripod and all that equipment, it can be so much trouble and so cumbersome. So this is what I call a time saver. I love it. So I just thought that was something I would share because it's something that I find value in. Anyways, I hope you found value in some of this. If you like this little camera, which I like it, I'm telling you, look down below here in the description and you'll see a link to where you can buy one of these little guys and hopefully enjoy it as much as I have. And I'm gonna put more videos coming soon of this little camera and how it works. I'm holding it now, I don't know if you can tell. I'm holding it in my hand, it's so freaking cool. I'm gonna do some more videos of this little camera and I'm gonna put some stuff together so you can see a little bit more of what it can do so that way you guys can get more inspiration on how to use it. Anyways, Hope to catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, and I will see you soon. Okay, bye. All right, let's do let's do a cool exit. All right, bye. Ooh.